audience today, Facebook Live or whoever we're, we're talking to, they're ministering to today. We'd like to welcome you to the Greater Dimensions Living Word Restoration Center. And we believe this is a place where lives are totally changed. We believe that you don't have to succumb to your, your outcomes the way that the devil is trying to set us up, but, but God is a living God, and he wants us to have the abundant life. And so I want to welcome you today. And everybody, our, our audience that's here present today, we want to welcome you also. And we just say, give our, our watching audience around the world a big hand. Come on, help me out. Give my hand. We welcome you today. Glory. Hallelujah. Let's get our Bibles and let's get started today. Let's get our Bibles and let's hold them up. And let's wave them around. Come on, wave them around. And let's make our confession today. Say, I am. I am. Who the Bible says I am. Who the Bible says I am. Say, I have. I have. What the Bible says I have. What the Bible says I have. Say, I can do. I can do. What the Bible says I can do. What the Bible says I can do. Say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. And not a doubter. And not a doubter. Say, I'm a doer of the word. I'm a doer of the word. And not just a hearer only. And not just a hearer And say, my life. My life. Is the better. Is the better. After having heard. After having heard. The word of faith. The word of faith. That faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing. And hearing. By the word of God. By the word of God. And it shall produce. And it shall produce. In my life. In my life. Say, faith. Faith. Faith, 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 faith. Say my faith, my faith is working. It's working by love. By love. And my love, and my love is working. It's working by faith. By faith. And I declare, and I declare that I'm restored. That I'm restored in every area. In every area of my life. Of my life today. 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 Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm excited about the word today. Before we get started. Let me give you my wisdom keys from Mike Murdoch today. Um, love this book. We're doing 85, 86, 87, and 88 today. Mike, appreciate you so much. This little book has truly been a blessing to my life because it makes me think outside of the box that tries to hold me up, keep me in a place that I know God has ordained I shouldn't be. And number 85 says this, never rewrite your theology to accommodate a tragedy. You know, a lot of times, how many know, how many know we do that? We rewrite what we believe to accommodate a tragedy. How many ever heard this thing like, God, God, picked another flower, take him to heaven? Do y'all, do y'all believe that stuff? Mm -mm. No, God don't have to. I think God needs us on earth more than he really need living in heaven. That's why we're going to come back to earth, I really believe. When, you know, I, I, I just don't think that God has to, has to kill somebody to take them to heaven. And I, I'm, I'm stuck on this thing because he, he said, he said to, um, what's his name, Elijah? No, he took him. And he took the other guy. He just took him. Why? Because they pleased him. He didn't say he killed him. He said he took him. You know, and that's what I was asking to be about. About, about God. Yeah, we, we so please God that he's, hey, 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 wait a minute. I'm so impressed with you and what you're doing to please me. Come on up here. Come on up. No, and so God wants to, want us not to rewrite things that accommodate a tragedy. No, don't look at things and say, well, you got to have common sense. Common sense don't outweigh the word of God. Y'all understand what I say? Say common say with me. Say common sense. Common sense. Does not. Does not. Outweigh. Outweigh. The word of God. The word of God. Now the word of God is living. It's powerful. It's sharp. And it cuts to the very places that common sense can't get. It cuts to the very marrow of your bones. It cuts to. No. It causes the intellect to be changed. You got to take the foolish and confound the wise. So we, we need to understand that never make, if I can say it like this, uh, an excuse is permission to fail. Y'all realize that? When we make an excuse about doing righteousness, it's permission for us to fail. What we need to do is, is pick up on righteousness and righteousness bring life. Y'all with me? Okay, let me go to eight six and up on that. Number 86 says, the greatest quality on earth 
is the willingness to become. Say that with me. Say the greatest quality. The greatest quality on earth. On earth is the willingness. Is the willingness to become. To become. What do you want? What do you need? Trust God. The willingness to become. God has given us that ability. The willingness to become. So don't succumb to to things that's going to kill you the wrong way. What you want to do is know that you're going to have what you believe. Have faith for it. And you can have it. Number 87. I like this one. Warfare always surrounds the birth of America. Say that with me. Say warfare. Warfare. Always. Always. Surrounds. Surrounds. The birth. The birth. Of America. Of America. Pastor, what are you talking about? Now, things are not going to be easy when there's something great that you, you got to have that, that stands in your way. There's going to be some things that are going to make you, the first thing it's going to do is come to cause you to turn around. How many of you know the first no don't mean no always? Just means no right now. But if, you, if you're persistent and you have the, the ability, what's the word we used to talk about the other night? Perseverance. That's the right word? Perseverance. How many of you got the ability to persevere? How many of you know that's in your salvation package? So, look, look. God don't want you quitting at the first no. God don't want you stopping, backing up when you hit a, a, a turn in the road. It looks like there ain't nowhere to go. When you persevere, how many of you know you're going to meet success? Amen. You meet it. Now, I just want you guys to, to know that God wants us to persevere. So, warfare always surrounds the birth of a miracle. Things get tough. No, you got America on the other side. Don't give up. No, you got America. No, you got America it's on the other side. You can't give up. And I'll use this again. Moses was, was it Moses or Noah? Which one? Moses. He was in that place where there was no turning back. He had a, he had a, 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 a um, a army behind him, and he had a seat to his front. Looks like there is nowhere to go. If that wasn't warfare, tell me. Then you got people that's screaming at you, come on in. Come on in. Thank you for coming today. Good to see you. But this warfare you have is like, there is nowhere to go. You can't turn around because the ocean's to your front. And just imagine the, the waves Lashing on the seashores of your face. And you got an army coming behind you. And you're like, there's nowhere. So what 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 number? The people that's not in God, what are you gonna start doing? We're gonna complain. We're gonna complain and we're gonna argue at the leader. We're gonna say to the leader, you barred us out here. Ain't that right? You barred us out here. But good leadership don't allow, don't allow that to stand. You know, the people are going to be frustrated, and they're going to say, you barred us out here. You should have left us in Egypt, where we had onions, where we had leeches, where we had all these things to eat. You know, and we look at that as being the best. How many of you like when the best for them? If God is the creator of heavens and earth, and he says, I spoke in the earth king, can he speak to that ocean? Huh? And what he said to, what he said to Moses? He said, What do you have in your hand? What do you have in your hand? See, 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 what God wanted to do is take the foolish thing and find the wise. He got a stick, in other words, in his hand, right? Yeah, we know it's a stick, but he said, You got a staff in your hand, right? Hold it up. And when he held it up, what happened? The seas parted. Didn't it? The seas parted. And here comes a miracle that we as men is now trying to trying to rationalize and say this thing were were well they walked through on dry, dry land. It was it was a couple feet deep. But if that's so, how did an army drown in it? Yeah. With horses. So so they walked through. Here go God doing something that somebody had to stand up. And say, God, I trust you. 
in the midst of it. There ain't nowhere else to go. So you had warfare on both sides. And God did what nobody else could do. He allowed them to walk through. He allowed them to see the birth of a miracle in, in place. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? He allowed them to see the birth of a miracle right there. So God wants to bless us. God wants us to be, to, to just know that he's the author and finisher of our faith. So let me go on. The next one is 88. Failure is not an option. Say that with me. Say failure, failure. is not an option. No, no, I'm sorry. Say failure, failure. is not an event. But an option. Y'all got that? Say failure. failure. It's not an event. But it's an option. Now, now, what option you want? What do you want? You want success. So, because you hit the rough spot, you get the crook. Where the, there, it looks like there's no opening to your front. It looks like there's no no, no, um, no way you can get out to the rear. So you're stuck in this point. So you don't quit there. You have an option. And you can succeed. Say, I will succeed. I will, I will succeed. succeed. I believe it. I believe it. That's right. Now, now, God wants to do great things for you. So failure is not an event, but it's an option. And most times we settle for failure. We settle for failure. And we don't have to. And God has been showing us throughout and, and from time past, he told the people, you know, put the, put the blood on the doorpost of your house and a deaf angel will pass over it. So they had an option. What was the option? They can put the blood there or they not. If they didn't, what, what was going to happen? They were going to participate and get the same results that the people that did not if they didn't do it. But the ones that obeyed him, what happened? The deaf angel passed over their house. How many know that the way unsuccess would do you when you when you not give up? It'll pass over you. It'll say, I, I, I have no authority here. I can't, I can't defeat them. I can't make them turn. So, so God wants you to know that. You don't have to settle for failure. You do not have to settle for failure. And so, since that brings us to this point now, uh, we've been dealing with faith. This is part seven today. Hopefully I can get done. Every time I think I'm going to get done, God downloads some more of this for me. I'm saying, Lord, you know how long I've been here? And he's saying it's not important how long you've been here. What's important is that we get the word, that we get the word, that we get the word. And so this is this is kind of like really just developing, and I'll probably, I'll probably break it down and make other messages in it and out of it, but I just thank him today for what he's doing. So we're in faith, and let me bring you up to speed a little bit. I'm not going to give you a long review today because I, I want to kind of get down a little bit, unless God says different. Okay, the foundation scripture that we're dealing with today is, it's going to be Hebrew. You have your Bible, go there with me. Hebrews chapter 12. No, I'm sorry, chapter 6, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. When you have it, say amen. Hebrews chapter 6. Verse 12. Somebody want to read that for me? King James. King James. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. How are you going to inherit the promises? Say through faith. Through faith. And patience. And patience. Now, now, you're going to inherit the promises through what? Say faith. Faith. faith and patience. And patience. That's how you're going to inherit it. Now, now, how does your faith develop a lot? Your faith is going to be developed based on what you believe. Y'all with me? Look up here at me a minute now. Faith is going to be developed based on what you believe.
So now, how do you get to believe something? Hearing it, right? Say over and over and over again. Let me prove that to you. Everybody here pretty much went to school, right? What did teachers start teaching at a uh, young age about one plus one equals what? Two. How many times did that teacher do that for us? No. Started you and, and, and you went home and your parents were saying to you what? One plus one is what? Two. Two. So in other words, a lot of times it just kind of got built into you and so your belief system grabbed it and now you don't even think about it. And you're like, what? That's elementary. That ain't even elementary anymore. You know? That that that's way below that. You know, that, that's built in there. But how many of you know by keep on hearing something over and over and over again, you begin to gravitate towards that if you ain't sharp. Now what what helps us a lot today is because I think God has put, thank you, Holy Spirit, put, put like parents in our lives. And what are parents there for? To guide us. To help build us. You know, and that's why God kind of got this evolving system. Y'all ever thought about it? No, one day you was a baby. The next day you were what? Like a, what's it, was it an adolescent? Or what's them terms in between? Toddler. Huh? Toddler. Toddler, and then what's the next one? Adolescent, Adolescent and then what? Teenager, and, and then what? Young, huh? young, adult. young adult. And then you start growing into what? Adulthood. And then sooner or later, you get to be an old adult. <laughs> Isn't that right? You get to be older. Mature. Mature. That's a better word for <laughs> it, right? And when, you, when you're like mature, then now you should be fully developed, and you're not moved by little things that moved you before. Y'all understand what I'm saying? No, you're not just moved by every little wind of doctrine. You you got some some experience behind you now. And a lot of times the experience teaches us through what? Through knots, through breaks, through all those things. Y'all know that, right? Now, how many know that's not the best teacher? Amen. Say it with me. Say experience. Experience. It's not. It's not. The best teacher. The best teacher. The best teacher. The best teacher. Come on, say the best teacher. The best teacher. Is hearing. Is hearing. And obeying. And obeying. Y'all hear me? Because now what happens, you can you can learn it through other people's abilities to succeed and not succeed. And and a lot of times. Older people want to share with you their wisdom, their knowledge, and the heartaches that they learn through things. If I ask you right today, I'm sure there's some things that you can tell me you don't want to go down this path. You know what? There's some things you're going to tell me you want to go this way. Why? Because this is where the blessings is. Over here is where you're not blessed at. So you want to get this through through faith, patience, inherit the promises. And we say faith comes by hearing, and hearing by what? The Word, the of, word God. of God. By the Word of God. Y'all yeah, with me? Mm -hmm. I'm going to skip down, and I'm going to jump here, because we said there are six faith truths. And I don't have time to do them today, but I'm going to say the just shall live by faith. Y'all with me? Say the just. Just. Shall live by faith. Live by say faith. I am. I am the just. The just. And I shall. And I shall live. Live by faith. Now you say, Pastor, you always got us repeating things and saying things. Why am I got you? Why am I having you to repeat and say these things over and over again? Cause you need to hear it for yourself. If you can hear it in yourself, when you start getting in trouble, uh, when things come, hardships start coming at you next week, uh, this week coming up, you can start saying, I am the just. And the just lives by faith. Or you can do it like I do. More shut up. You are the just. And you live by faith. You're not living by the circumstances that's coming at you right now. But you're going to live by what? Faith. Y'all hear me? And so when you put trust and confidence in the word of God, it will produce. Y'all with me? Say it will produce. It will produce. So the, 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 the just shall live by faith. 
I am the Jess. I am the Jess. And number two, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Say, faith is. Faith is. The substance, the substance of things hoped for, of things hoped for evidence, evidence of things of things not seen. Not seen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit say, now, now faith is something, is something that your your five natural senses cannot produce. What are your five natural senses? Sight. Sight. Smell. Smell. Taste. Taste. Hearing. Hearing. Touch. Touch. Come on, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Now, how many know that's what we live by a lot of times? We live by, if I can't see it, I don't believe it. Ain't that right? If I can't touch it, I don't believe it. And that's, this is where Jesus is. And uh, what was his name? Um, the one that, he said, I, I won't believe it unless, unless I, I put my fingers. Thomas. 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 You know what he said? Thomas, Dalton Thomas. We call him what? Dalton Thomas. But how many know? Uh, how many of you know we got some doubting Christians in this place well, so We got some doubting Christians. We, we're like, I won't believe it until I put my finger in the nail prints of his hand. And Jesus came and he said, what? He said, Tom, Thomas, just for you. Take your finger up in my side. And he started saying things like, like Thomas, blessed are the ones that that never seen it. Isn't that what he said? He said, blessed are the ones that what? Never seen it. And he said, he said, but for you, Thomas, just to, just to make you and to let you understand that I am who I said that I am and that I can do what God produces me to do. For you, Thomas, dig your fingers where? In my side, in, in the imprints of my hand. How many know that's why Jesus come to us today? And, and I, I like it because one of my senior pastors said, when she was a young Christian, she said, she said to, she said to, uh, God came to her and said, said if, if there's anything I can do for you today, what would you have me do for you? She said, if you God, give me a sewing machine. So God gave her a singer. Somebody come and bought her a singer. Ain't that the name of them sewing machine? Mm -hmm. Brand new. All right? Now, she's young now. So how many know God wants you to believe and trust in him? So now, now, come on, go sit down. You're down a little too much. But, but, but check this out. Check this out. No, no, you're not down. Check this out. Check this out. What, what happens here is that, is that God sends people to answer those prayers. How many times have we been sent to answer somebody's prayer? And we thought that I'm going to just do a good deed today. How many know it was God that was moving on your heart? To go answer somebody else's prayer. You don't even know the prayer. You're like, I'm just going to go give them $20 today. I'm going to just bring them a bag of food today. I'm going to just go by and you meet somebody at the gas station and they, and they, they stand there and their cars on eat and they're saying, you, I ain't got no money. Would you, would you please? And you feel, well, I'm going to help them. How many of God sent you to answer those prayers? Say it with me. Say, I, I will hear. Uh, yeah. And I'll be obedient. And I'll be obedient. Okay. Now, the flip side of that is you have people that hear and will not answer. Because they think somebody's trying to get over on them. Now, you think somebody's trying to take you for a little $20 bill. And God's trying to get trying to get more to you than that $20 bill. Y'all hear me? So, so now, now, look at this. Look at this. So God wants you to be an answer to people. And in that, he wants to bless you in the midst of it. Y'all y'all with me? Mm -hmm. All right, I, I, I done got a mother the thing there. Let me go on. Number three, faith is taking God. Say faith is, faith is. taking God, taking God. At, his word. at his word. Now, how many of us take God at his word? Because now this is where you don't, you don't, you can't, you can't hold on to it. You can't. See, it don't look like you have no platform to stand on. Don't look like you have anything that's holding you up. So now you got to take God at his word. you got to take God at his word. All right, let's go on. Number four, faith is confidence in the testimonies of God. Say, faith is. Faith is. 
confidence, confidence in the testimony, in the testimony of God. God. Now, now, how many of you know that when God answers something for you one time, it should build your confidence? Y'all with me? It should build your confidence. It should build your confidence. Uh, when you got a friend and they like tell you they're going to do something and they do it, don't you kind of like, okay, this, this friend will do what they said they would do. Ain't that right? So you have confidence in them, right? So number five, faith is acting on the word of God. Number six, faith is knowing what to do to release the power of God in your life. That's what we need to, we need to understand. Now, we, we said that there were some strongholds to your faith. Number one, the first stronghold to your faith is ignorance. Say ignorance. Ignorance. Uh, we talked about ignorance. So we say ignorance is not a bad word. It's just not knowing. Most times somebody say you're ignorant. What happened? How do you feel? Stupid. Huh? Stupid. You feel stupid, but the average person want to do what? You want you want to throw blows. <laughs> you you want to throw blows because you just said what? Well, I'm stupid. They didn't call you stupid. They just said you didn't know. But what happened? You allowed your mind to run and go crazy with that. Hey, and, and how many you know not knowing is not a, it's not a bad thing. It just means you don't know something, and somebody else knows something. If, if you allow them, they will share it with you. What happens while you don't get the, the other side of the, the coin off this is because we get offensive towards it, and we start thinking that I got to defend myself. They're calling me stupid. Ain't that right? And so you don't have to be that way. All right, let's go. Religion. Wow, this, this religion thing is terrible because it, it's just that it, it like keeps us from really having the power of God work in our life. It denies us the power of God to work in our life. Religion does. And so uh, racism is another big one. Racism causes us to hate somebody because of their skin color. Ain't that something? When we should be loving on each other, because God is diversity. He has, he has, he didn't just make uh, an orange, he made an apple. Didn't he? He didn't just make a man, he made a woman. Didn't he? So in every, every aspect of this thing, we, we, we bar down to racism and we allow it to keep us from experiencing who someone else really are. I, 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 I remember when I was, I was in the military. Jim Hallwood, I don't know where you at today, but if you were viewing this message anywhere, uh, me and you became the best of friends. Why? Because we had a drill sergeant that stuck us together. You white and I'm black. You stuck us together and you said you will know about him. He will know about you. And then I began to experience. I thought, you know, my problems were unique to me, not knowing that we faced some of the same problems. At that time, he had little girlfriend problems. Well, I had little girlfriend problems. You know, we found out we got up the next morning. We, we thought some of the same things, but what separated us, because it was like racism, and I never knew him, and he never knew me. But we began to, to find out about each other, and then we began to love on each other. Y'all understand what I'm saying? We, we, we just like begin to love on each other. God become my best of friends, and to this day, I never, ever forgot Jim Harwood. My, my, my AIT buddy in the Army. Up 10 years ago. Never ever forgot him. Okay? So, racism can hurt us. It stops us from gaining what God wants us to gain in life. The next one is poor self esteem. How do you see yourself? How do you see yourself? How do you see yourself? This is what I want you to do is I want you to get a mirror and I want you to look in the mirror. And I want you to look at yourself. If you if you got poor self-esteem problems, I want you to begin to replace what you see in the mirror with God. God, you said that I am an overcomer. Y'all with me? You said that I'm a peculiar people. Ain't that what he said about you? 
Huh? So, so what do you start doing? You start replacing it, and you start speaking to yourself. You start, you start calling up in you who God has already put in you that you got suppressed so far, and you got held down. God wants you to, to pull it up. Y'all with me? All right, the last one is poverty. Poverty is something fierce because it, it like it, it, it causes you from from having success. It causes your mind to think that, well, you don't even realize, but it operates in your subconscious mind. It, it's like, you know, give you a million dollars today, and because you're used to being broke, tomorrow you'll be what? Broke. Why? Because we allowed something to play that we didn't even realize it was playing with us. I'm playing on that. So we said, there's, a, there's seven components to strengthen in my belief system. Say seven components. Seven components. The strengthening. The strengthening. My belief system. My belief system. Now, I, I always said we want to start off with clothing ourselves in the full arm of God. And the, and the place I like to start is we want to throw on the, the bell of truth. Say, I got to put on. I got to put on. The bell of truth. The bell of truth. Now, now everything else got to be around this bell. Because if you don't put on truth up front, what are you going to do? Say, I'm going to live a lie. Live a so truth is what we really want to live. The Bible says that the truth will make you free. How many of you know that? Say the truth. The truth. The truth. Will, make will make me free. free. So now it will only make you free, but it will set you free. The truth will not. So you want to put on this belt. And when you put on this belt, you want to begin to tighten this belt up. You want to take this belt and you want to tighten it around your loins. You don't want it to slip. You don't want it to fall. All this comes out of Ephesians, okay, chapter six. So you want to put on that. You want to put on that that belt. You want to put on that belt, and and by putting on that belt, it's gonna cause you to start operating in truth. You know? If you got a Ford car. Or if you got a what? Whatever car. In that car, there's some truth that goes with that car. How do you find out those truths about that car? In the in the manual, right? You pull out the manual, it's gonna tell you some truths about the car. It'll tell you probably what tire pressure should be. It's probably gonna tell you what kind of oil needs to go in the car. It's going to probably tell you a lot of things about breaking systems, all these kind of things. But how many know we never read those things? What we do is we get in the car and we, so we had one car and we figure that car operates the same way. So we're not causing the car to live to its full potential. Or we're not getting the full potential out of it because we're trying to make it be, oh, oh, thank you. We're trying to make it uh, a butter knife be a screwdriver. Anybody ever used the butter knife to turn to turn a screw before? And you know, I'm amazed at it because people say it work. You bend, you bend the knife. Uh, yeah, you bend the knife. It probably hurt your finger, and it probably took you twice as long, or uh, four times as long. Y'all with me? But it was a butter knife, and they said it worked. They was they was thrilled with the success that they made. That it was a screwdriver. But I'm like, they were. If you could only hear the designer thoughts about a butter knife, it, I'm sure it had nothing to do with a screwdriver. Isn't that right? So if you get the right tool now and you use the screwdriver, how much faster does it work? It works. But when we don't get it that way, we, we use it the wrong way. So you want to put on the truth. That's, that's the way God's word is. You want to put on the truth in God's word. Uh, and I'm not going to go through all these, but you want your feet showed in the proper in the, in the, in the preparation of the gospel of peace. How do you get to peace? You got to have the truth on. Why do marriages break up? Because they can't agree. And how do you get peace? Say by agreeing. By agreeing. By agreeing. We need to learn how to agree in this thing. So, you want, you want to be shown in the preparation of the gospel of peace. Let me go. Uh, I got to get here. 
Number one, the strengthening my belief system is say through hearing. Through hearing. Come on, say through hearing. Through hearing. Now, now we said that you had to hear when we try to preach and talk about this. Say, I have to hear. What do I have to hear? The word of God. Now, a lot of times, this is a marriage thing, but a lot of times, let's go back to when you were in high school and you had the little sweethearts. Y'all remember that? Anybody remember the high school sweethearts? Mm-hmm. Y'all remember it? <laughs> huh? And then, then you had the high school sweetheart, and you got a friend over here, and they like, boy, you don't want them, blah, 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 blah. They talk negative about your high school sweetheart, and what do you do? What do you do? Yeah. You turn away from them. Mm-hmm. Why? It's through what? Yeah. Hearing. Hearing. Chances are you never ever got to experience the person and know who the person was. You just heard what somebody else had to say. So through hearing. So, so now, I, I got to do this because I love this Luke 8 and 18. Go there with me. Luke 8 and 18. Get there with me. Luke 8 and 18. When y'all got to say amen. Somebody read it for me. Okay, that's Luke 8 and 18. Now, listen what it's saying. Anybody else got another version? N- what you got? NLT. NLT, let's say it. Let me hear it. So, pay attention to how you hear. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But for those who are not listening, even what they think they understand will be taken away from them. Okay, so, so what they think they understand will be taken away. So, it says, pay attention to how you what? Here, y'all with me? Wait, wait a minute now. Let me try this out of the room. It says what? Pay attention to how you what? Hear. That that's crucial. How you hear something? Because we said you're ignorant, and the first thing you heard was they called me stupid. Stupid. So now, did they have the real interpretation of what they just heard? No. So when you heard stupid, what happened? You become like a pot boiling over. You got offended, and you're ready to throw to do what? Throw down. Throw, throw, throw blows. Tell me, what's that song? What's that song? The one I play all the time you introduce me to. I'm a difference maker. Y'all heard that song? Difference maker. What he's talking about? How God gives you a fortune and allow a man to destroy it with his own two hands. A difference maker. And then one part of that talks about how you turn the thorn blows. Why? Because you heard it the wrong way. You received it the wrong way. So, so now, now look at this. Let me read this for you. Let me make sure I got this right. Because hearing says, how how that verse go? We we want to, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So, so what we're saying is that hearing now becomes how you understand the word. How you understand it. So let me try this. This says, Take heed, therefore, how you understand. Say that with me. Say, take heed. Take heed. Therefore, therefore, to how, to how I, I understand. Understand. For whosoever, wait a minute now, for whosoever, say I'm a whosoever. I'm a whosoever. Now, now ain't that amazing that God didn't say just for one? But he says what? Whosoever now. So he opens this thing up to who? Everybody. Everybody. He says, for whosoever, check this out, for whosoever has understanding, to him shall be given. What? So if I have understanding, 
it shall be given me. If I have understanding, it shall be given me. If I don't have understanding, what's going to happen? What I seem to have is going to be what? Taken away. It's going to be taken away. So we need understanding. We need understanding. Y'all with me, right? So here we go. Here we go. So we, we don't want something taken away because we don't have understanding. All right? So we, we just want to make sure that we understand what the Word of God has to, has to say for us. Okay? So the next one is say through seeing. Say through seeing. Number one was through what? Hearing. Number two is what? Seeing. Through seeing. Okay. Now, now, now. I love this because seeing means the way I perceive a thing. Okay, if I perceive the wrong stuff in it, I'm going to have wrong results. Y'all with me? What results would you like to have? Huh? Say I'm overcome. What results I like to have? Say overcoming. Overcoming. Result. Wasn't it? Ain't that what you want to have? So, so now, when you start seeing this, and you start seeing, I think this is a process of being whole. Y'all know what we mean by being whole? Say nothing missing. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing broken. So, so nothing missing in your life, but nothing broken in your life. Okay. So the process of becoming whole. So now, now God wants us to be whole in this process. So the way I, I see a thing. Now remember, we're not talking about with these natural senses of seeing. We're talking about being able to perceive and relate to the Word of God. What the word of God said? When I give, it shall what? Given unto me. Ain't that right? Say the word of God says. The word of God says. When I give, when I give. it shall be given back. It shall be given back. Good measure. Good measure. Press down. Press down. Shaking together. Shaking together. And running over. Running over. Shall men. Shall men. Give. Give. Into my bosom. Into my now, bosom. Now the word of God also declares that Jesus was wounded for your transgressions. Why? Right? He was bruised for what? Say my iniquities. My iniquities. And the chastised men. And the chastised men. Of my peace. Of my peace. Was where? Upon Jesus. Upon Jesus. And by Jesus' stripes. And by Jesus' stripes. Am I healed? Am I healed? Now, you got to be able to gravitate that way and go that way and perceive and hold on to those things and believe that faith comes. All right? Y'all with me? So now, we talked about last week through confession. Was that what we were last week? Meditation. Okay, now one more. Through confession. Through confession. Through confession means by speaking. Is that right? I speak the truth. I speak what the Word of God has to say about me. And how many of you find yourself speaking the wrong thing about you? Y'all ever, ever did that before? I, I used to have this buddy. Rather than me and him grow up together. And I said, Warren, you ain't no good. And he'll say, Warren, you ain't no good. He was like a parent. You know, he got me hearing what I was saying about me. Y'all hear me? And then I began to, to start changing what I'm saying about me. Because you say it long enough, what happened? You start to believe it. Y'all hear me? So you don't want to, you want to start believing things. So speaking is where you don't want to allow it to go the wrong way. You want to begin to speak the right things. So last week we talked about meditation. Meditation means to think on something and to turn it over and over in your mind and heart. So meditation. Meditation. It's to think on something. It's to think on something. You turn it over and over and over again in your heart. Y'all with me, right? So, so now, let, let me go on because I want to I wanna get down here. And I want to get down to, we were going to meditation last week? Meditation. So, when you, when you meditate on it, you, you're like saying, okay. I think the part of meditation we got wrong is we meditate on it and then we begin to speak it. Meditation is now taking it and now you, you're saying it to God. 
you're not taking it and voicing it to my neighbors. Y'all with me? You're not, you're not voicing it to others. You're voicing it where? They're voicing it to God. Listening to God. And as you voice it to God, how many know you give the right answer? It tell you I'm handling that thing. So, now, now let me go on, because I want to get here. I want to get here today. Go with me to the Psalms 19. Y'all have the same man? We're kind of go here. Psalms 19. Go with me to verse 7. Verse 7 says, The law of the Lord is what? Perfect. Say the law of the Lord. The law of the Lord. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's converting what? The soul. The testimonies of the Lord is what? Sure. Making wise what? The simple. So if there's things that's not right in your life, things that's not going the way you like them to go or going to according to the word of the Lord, you can begin to put the word in on it. And the word now begins to perfect what's not right. Y'all know that? Now I know now. Thank you because you're saying to me, how in the world is that going to happen? I don't know. But it's kind of like a seed you put in the ground. Can anybody tell me how it, how it grows? Water. Huh? Water it? Okay, that's part of it. But how does it grow? How does the thing die and then turn to life? According to what they say now, I don't know. Is that even true or not? But you put it in the ground, you cover it up, and, and you put some water in the ground, and it's supposed to get to the seed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. And then later on, what happens? Yeah. It starts to sprout. So, look, if you're like that, and you're covered up, and you're not sure where you're going and what's coming out, and you begin to put the word in there, and you begin to water it with the word, what's going to happen? It's going to change, and it's going to grow. Right? So, so, we, we just want to understand this now. So now we're, we're today, we're at dis through discipline thinking. Today we started discipline thinking. Discipline thinking. Go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Y'all have to say amen. Yeah, I'll pick it up in a different ver some different versions for me of the Bible. Who's got King James? Who's got another version? Okay. Anybody got message? Anybody got what you got, Linda? NLT. NLT? Anybody, what you got? NIV. NIV? Okay. Who else got something else? CEV. CEV? Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Second Corinthians 10 and 5, King James. Cast me down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Okay, now, now, now King James was saying like this, you got to cast down imagination. How many know you have imagination? You have things that's going to come up and you got you got to be able to cast them down. You know? And those things that come up and they're like, they're like you're fishing. How many people fish? Anybody fish? You fish, right? So you put, I, I talked to the young man the other day, and we were talking about fishing. He's like, well, I only just put worms on my hook. I say, you only fishing for one kind of fish or what? No? So there's many types of bait you can use depending on what you want to try. Isn't that right? So most people think, because they've been fishing, they go and they put one type of worm on it, and they never heard of a different type of worm. They probably go night crawler, and that's basically it. But they never heard of a, worm, a, a red worm, they never heard of a grudge, they never heard of that little, what that little one that, um, what are those things? Maggots. Maggots, come on. <laughs> I'll wait for y'all to bring it up. Huh? Minnows, right? So there's all sorts of things that you can use to fish with, even plastic. Bait you can use depends on what you want what you want to fish for, right? So we put a worm out there, we think we're gonna catch every kind of fish. 
And the fish be right there, the worm be right there, and he's looking at, I want that. Ain't that right? I said, I I gotta give my life for this thing. You think I'm gonna take that? It ain't about that. You know what? So, so you think about that. So when the devil gives you a thought, how are you going to handle it? Are you going to have discipline towards that thought? Or are you going to just like, I'm going to get that? You know? So it depends on, he's not just going to come at you with anything. He's going to come at you with things you think you want, probably. So you got you to have discipline things. So first thing you got to do is cast down imagination. Got to cast it down. And every high thing that is us itself against the knowledge of God. All right, who's next? Who's got that verse next? Go, then. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Uh, okay, read that again because that was good. That was good. We destroy yeah. every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. Wait, 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 wait. Don't go no further. We destroy every proud yeah. obstacle. Yeah. Right? Now, 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 what happens in our life a lot of times? What causes us to get out of the will of God? Say pride. Pride. Doesn't it? Y'all know, know what pride is? Huh? Who can help me with pride? What is pride? Anybody know? I can do it myself. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Wait, how many times we say, I don't need your help? Ain't that right? So, so now, now, how many ever watch Naked and Afraid? Y'all don't watch Naked and Afraid? <laughs> mm -hmm. Let me introduce y'all to Naked and Afraid. Naked and Afraid is a TV show. That these people are naked and they go in the jungles. They don't have shoes. They don't have no food. They give them a fire starter sometimes and a machete and maybe a pot. Sometimes they don't get a pot. So now they gotta they gotta get all their food. They gotta walk around naked. They got thorns out there. And I know y'all think I'm talking about like right here. They be in the jungles. Y'all never been in a jungle before? I've been in a jungle before. A jungle in a playground. There's everything in a jungle, son. You think mosquitoes eat you here? You ain't seen that stuff out there. They got stuff out there I can't even get names for. It don't play. So they walk around out there barefoot. And they're naked. And so now what happens is when they're out there, they mean, some of the people are like, I'm going to kick the jungle's butt. How many know that jungle beast? Come on up in here. Come on up in here. Let me teach you something new. You see some of them people be crying. Some of them fall, bop. They face down. Wow. When you get hungry, you ain't got no energy, and you got a fan for something to eat, it ain't like you can walk down the Kroger's. It ain't like that. The grubs you got, the people be eating grubs, y'all. Y'all, y'all ready to eat some grubs? Or something? They be eating that stuff. They be catching minerals and eating minerals. They ain't cooking. <laughs> Throw it down. Y'all, y'all need to watch my show. <laughs> y'all need to watch my show. Naked and afraid. Check it out. Check it out. They'll it, it, teach you some stuff now. So, that pride thing you go at with, you think it benefits you, a lot of times it whoops you, makes you take back. What you said, go ahead, Linda. We, we capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Okay. Captures their rebellious thoughts and teach them to do what? Okay. To obey Christ. Now, now, we said worship was what? Obey. Right? How many know it's important to obey? Come on. It's important to obey. Most people think, I don't have to obey. Most people think that I can do it my, my own way. I can do it without God. How many know you can't do it without God? 
Okay, so 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 you got you gotta see this. Who else got this in another version? I have C V. What? C V. C V? No. And every bit of pride that keeps anyone from knowing God, we capture people's thoughts and make them obey Christ. Okay. Every bit of pride that keeps you from knowing God. Every bit. The devil wants you to be in that state right there. That you're not knowing Christ. Y'all hear me? Because you're not knowing Christ, what's going to happen? Say, I'm lost. I'm lost without him. Anybody else got another version? Everybody good? Okay, let's go on to the next one. Now, now we talk about disciplined thinking. The way you think about something makes a difference. Go to me to Romans 12 and 3. Romans 12 and 3. Y'all got it? Say amen. All right, read it for me, Jason. You got it? Yes. Go ahead. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Wait, wait, now, you hear what he's saying? By the grace given to me, I'm telling you not to think of yourself, what? More highly than what? You ought to. Than you ought to. What happened is, you know, we come around other people and we elevate ourselves, I'm better than them. How many know that? That's, that's grounds for you to, you to fail in life. That's grounds for you to fail in life. You know, the person might not be doing so well, but he don't give you the grounds to be better than them. Is that right? person might have failed on hard times, but he don't give you the grounds to be better than them because you, you dressed okay and you're looking okay. You got a good haircut and all that stuff, and they don't. I don't give you the grounds to say you're better than them. Go ahead, Jason. But rather think of yourself with sober judgment. Uh huh. Think of yourself with what? Sober judgment. Say sober judgment. Go ahead. In accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. Mm hmm. So according to the faith that God has distributed to each one of us. Now, now, how many of you remember this story in the Bible? That this, this guy was coming by and there was this guy that was sick. And, and here comes a preacher on the other side, walk by. And this guy picks him up, the Samaritan, the Samaritan, Samaritan picks him up, and he bandages up his wounds, and he takes him to the inn, and he gives him to the innkeeper, and he says, whatever it costs you to take care of him, put it on my tail. And when I come back this way, I'll take care of it. You know, that's the way people used to be. And you know, I hate to say this, but I've seen this more Right now, in this, in this hardship that America's in right now with the coronavirus, that they got it posted on the side of what it says? Help one another. How many have seen that besides, besides me? And you guys just came from, from uh, Philadelphia? Pennsylvania. 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 Was well, yeah, that the Pittsburgh. same thing up there? Do they have signs out like that up there? When it says help one another, right? right. Now, that, that spread across America. It's like help one another. And so what do you see? You see people more, more apt to help each other, even though we had this crisis going on. You're seeing people, you know, more apt to help than run away and turn their back. Like we were before. We'd like, well, that's your problem. That ain't mine. So, so now we're, 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 we're like helping each other. So, so we need not to think of ourselves more highly than what we really are. We need to have a sober judgment. And that sober judgment is, is that I'm no better than anyone else. I only live because Christ lives in me. Y'all with me? Say, I live. I live. Because Christ, because Christ lives, in me. lives in me. Okay, let's go on. Now, now, who else got in another version? Anybody else got in another version? Amplified what it says. For by the grace, the unmerited favor of God given to me, I warn everyone among you not to estimate and think of himself more highly than he ought, not to have an exaggerated opinion of his own importance, but to rate his abilities with sober judgment, each according to the degree of faith appropriated, appropriated 
that God should give us. So, so now, we, we got to know why the grace of God is appropriated to us. Go with me to Psalms 119 and 7. Somebody get that for me. Psalms 119 and 7. One nineteen and seven Psalms. One nineteen and seven. Thy word have I heeded. Excuse me, that's eleven. That's eleven. I, I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. Okay, so I will praise you with what? Uprightness. Uprightness of what? Heart. heart. Anybody else have that in a different version? What you got, Daisy? Yeah, I will praise you with an upright heart as I learn your righteous laws. Uh-huh. As I learned your what? Righteous laws. Now, now wait a minute. Y'all know what righteousness is, right? Right standing. It's right standing. Say, say this with me. It's God's way of doing things. It's God's way of doing things. Now, now, righteousness is God's way of doing things. It's more than my way of doing things. How I many you know my way is not satisfactory to God a lot of times? So God comes up with a standard and the right ways we should be able to do things. Okay? Y'all with me? So, so now, now, look at this. So, anybody got that in a message? What you got? What, what, what you got, Linda? Oh. I can do a message. Okay, do a message for me. But it starts with verse 3 or 1. Okay, go with it. Okay. You're, you're blessed when you stay on course, walking steadily on the road revealed by God. You're blessed when you follow its dire His direction. Doing your best to find him. That's right. You don't go off on your own. You walk. Wait, wait. Now, that's true. You, you don't go off on your own. Your blessing is where? It's like train tracks. And the tracks does what? They got the train. Anytime the train get off the tracks, what happens? Yeah. Huh? A wreck. I like what you say, right? A wreck. But this is where, where you have a, I'm just not talking about a, a wreck. But you have a mess. That thing derails. And because the force is pushing it a lot of times, it causes it to go destroy all the things that's in the past. Yeah, y'all see what I'm saying? So go ahead, Linda. That's right. You don't go off on your own. You walk straight along the road he set. You, you God prescribe. Yeah, you God prescribe the right way to live. Now you expect us to live it. Oh, that my steps might be steady, keeping to the course you set. Then I'd never have any regrets in comparing my life with your counsel. I thank you for speaking straight from your heart. I learn. The pattern of your righteous ways. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. Don't ever walk off and leave me. Mm -hmm. See, don't. That, that's what your 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 mindset, your thinking need to be. I need. I never need to stop. God ways in my life. Y'all with me? All right. So so let me give you one more scripture. We we'll stop right here. We we'll pick up after this next week. One more scripture. Proverbs 23, 7, 8. Proverbs 23. When y'all get there, say amen. Mm -hmm. Seven. And I, I just want the, the top part of it. But who has it? Read it for me. Go. King James. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Okay. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. What do you want to say, Linda? A message. Yeah, this is good. Okay. Don't accept the mail from a tight one. Don't, mm -hmm. don't expect anything <laughs> special. He'll be as stingy with you as he is with himself. He'll say, eat, drink, but won't mean a word of it. Mm -hmm. His miser, his mi his miserly serving will turn your stomach when you realize the mill's a sham. Uh huh. What? 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 So, so you don't want to mm -mm. receive a, a message from a Taiwa, a meal from a Taiwa. Mm -hmm. He don't mean it. Mm -hmm. He don't mean it. And so, 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 what this is saying to us? Anybody else got that in another version? I like the message. The message is up in your face. Yeah. Okay. In, in, what you got? I got a CEV. What CEV said? You said thirty seven. Yep. People like that take note. How much you eat. They say take all you want, but they don't mean it. Each bite will come back in, and all your kind words will be wasted. Okay. So so each bite will you know it's gonna come back up. And all your kind words gonna be wasted. Y'all hear me? So 
Proverbs 23 and 7, and the, and the New King James says it like this, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. What do you got, Jason? Seven through what? Just seven. Seven, oh. eight, if you got it. That's eight, the first part. Eight finishes yeah. it up. For he is the kind of person who is always thinking about the cost. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Uh -huh. You will vomit up the little you have eaten and will have wasted your compliments. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, so y'all got that? So you, you got to realize now, as a, as a person thinks in their heart, they might say all the right things out here. They don't, they don't mean it. They, they don't mean it. And so this is why important is important. As a person thinks, as they think, so is he. You remember I said that you can give a person a million dollars? They're used to being broke. What's going to happen? They're going to be broke. Why? Because that's the way they think. And so thinking now becomes like in your subconscious and those things begin to operate in you and you don't realize why they're operating in you. So God wants to bless you. He wants you to really have the right mindset, the right thinking pattern. I think, what's that other scripture? I'm going to quit right here. But it's Romans, ain't it? Romans chapter, ain't it Romans cha chapter 1, uh, uh, chapter 12, verses 2? What it says? Romans 12 and 2. Romans 12 and 2. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, so so when, when you you got your mind renewed, you know, and what happens, how I many you know we, we're kind of living as what the world wants us to live in? But when you got your mind transformed against the things of the world, it's going to bring righteousness and it's going to bring a great outcome to you. How many want to be successful in life? How many of you know and don't? God gave Abraham a promise. Did he not? What was that promise? Abraham, you'd be the father of what? Many nations. Many nations. Abraham died with how many children? No. One, two, three. He had seven more after, after the one. He had died. Because he had, yeah, he had different wives, not your own. Okay. Yeah, but the one was the promised child. What was the promised child? Did y'all know that? What was the promised child? Now he said you're gonna be father of many nations, and you can look at that and say and say, okay, uh, he only had one was the promised child, Isaac. That's a side of righteousness. But he had Ishmael, side of unrighteousness. It, it, not, not, he said he's going to be father of what? Many nations. He didn't say all of them was going to be righteous. But that's the way we think. But he didn't say all of them would be righteous. He said you're going to be the father of what? Many nations. Y'all with me? There's a promise. There's the promise. And he promised them you're going to have what? A child. Abraham was 100 years old. Can y'all imagine having a child at 100 years old? I'm just thinking a baby. When you're 100 years old, you got to have some energy to take care of a baby. <laughs> See, when you're young, you don't even pay any attention. You get about 50 and you start having kids, they want you to ride a bicycle with them. They want you to run down the street with them. Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? <laughs> Children can be a day's work just by themselves. Ain't that right? So now, now God wants us to know that he can perfect it all. He gives you the energy to take care of people. 100 years old, he gave them energy to take care of that baby. It's like a renewed thing, okay? All right, we're going to stop right there.
and we're gonna give our altar calls today, and we're gonna see if there's anybody that don't.